Bible, right in the book. Uh, I want you to take your Bible this morning over to Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter number 16. If you've been starting reading your Bible through this year, you've already passed this part um, day, weeks ago. But um, I'm going to look at some very, very well-known, controversial scripture this morning here in Matthew 16. Here in Matthew chapter 16. Have you ever uh, wondered about the church and, and its place and purpose in this world? What are we doing? What are we doing here this morning? I mean, what's the purpose of all this? I want to read that a little bit about it this morning in Matthew chapter 16. And verse, look at verse number 13. And we'll begin reading there. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Thus some say thou art John the Baptist. Some say some of them thought he's Elias. Some of them Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. His confession was, you're Jesus Christ, God's Son, God in flesh, the Son of God. Now look what Jesus said in verse 17. This scripture is so important, the entire foundation of the Catholic Church is built on this scripture right here. And a wrong interpretation of it. 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Now stop there just a second. He said, look, there's no way a man could figure this out unless God let him. God has revealed this to you. I'm glad that night, that night the Lord revealed that to me. And God let you see it, me see it. Uh, you see, once you see that Jesus Christ was God's Son in flesh here on this earth, uh, that, that's the ticket right there. Now look here what the Lord said about that. And Jesus answered said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, Bar maybe his last name, for flesh and blood is not revealed unto thee, my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will, future tense, build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, we've heard that pre preacher say that thousands and thousands of times. But he looked here in, in verse 20, 19, and I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. That's where the Catholic Church believes. That the church is built upon Peter. Because Peter's name in Latin means rock. And they thought that, Jesus, that Peter was the rock that the church is built on. And the entire Catholic hierarchy and Catholic church is built upon the belief that Peter was the rock Jesus is talking about. And that the whole church is built on Peter. And Peter himself was the first pope. That's what they believe. Now, if he was a pope, he wasn't a very good one uh, because Jesus called him the devil in verse 23. And, and, uh, and now the Lord, of course, that, he might have been a pope. Uh, uh, he, he had a mother-in-law, and uh, so that means he's married. He had a mother -in -law. And so Peter, well, that's, that's all wrong. The Lord did not say, Peter, you're the rock, and on you I'm going to build my church. He did. He said, Thou art Peter. I've heard your confession that I'm the Son of God. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, that don't mean much to most of y'all because most of us never even, never even seen a Catholic priest. I ain't never seen one around here all, all my life. Don't even know nobody from here. But the people that are from up north and raised different, that's, that's very, very, very important. And fundamental that, that they understand that and get it. So he was saying to this. He was saying, a, a, looking right at Peter, directly to Peter. And he addressed Satan through Peter there in verse 23. 
Don't forget that. But he said, he said, uh, he said, Peter, on this rock, I will future build my church. That's the title of the message this morning. I will build my church. And the Lord did it, and the Lord said it, and the Lord is doing it, and he will finish what he started. Now listen to me this morning. I'm going to talk to you about the church. When I talk about the church, you, you understand, everybody knows, I ain't talking about these walls and stuff. This is the building where the church meets. The church are born again believers in the body of Christ here on this earth. He told his disciples, this is what I'm going to do. Meaning that the church wasn't, the church which is his body was not in the Old Testament. Uh, Old Testament uh, saints, uh, well, that's why they didn't go to heaven when they died. They went to Abraham's bosom, and then when Jesus died, paid the debt, he emptied it out and moved paradise up yonder to the third, to the third heaven, and that's where they are today. Now, you, you've got to understand that the church, uh, that word church means ecclesia. Uh, that's called out. All that means is called out. I'm going to call you out of here. I'm going to call you out of there. I'm going to call you out of there. And we're called. Did you know sitting here this morning at Shining Light Baptist Church, we are a local church. And we are called out. You know, you know that? Uh, we're, we sitting right here this morning. We are a called out group. A called out group. We're not out there in the world this morning. There's a difference between us and them. We're no better than they are. But we're called out. And we're a part of the body of Christ on this earth. Now. There's a lot of controversy over uh, the uh, starting the church, and I'll mention that again in a minute. But the, you got to remember this is different from the church that was in the wilderness in Acts chapter number uh, number seven. Any called out group could be referred to as a church, but the church which is His body is what we're talking about this morning. It's typified by a body. It's typified by a bride. We are the bride to be of Jesus. We are engaged. Paul said, I have a spouse. That's what that means. You to, uh, one, as one, a virgin to your future husband, we the church, Jesus the, the bridegroom, us the bride. We are not married to him yet. We are engaged to him. We're going to a wedding. We're going to have a marriage supper. And we're going uh, to be with him forever and ever and ever. Uh, now, you got to understand these things. Let me say a few things about that this morning. And... Uh, and I'll let you go. First of all, I'm going to talk about the creation of the church. The creation of the church. You see, a lot of people, especially this day and time, they'll, they'll be on the news and they'll come on and they'll make TikTok videos and they'll make all this stuff about uh, who do these people think they are. Good night. Uh, they're starting these churches. All these, And they think all this is man-made. And they think uh, religions uh, are all man-made. And most of them are. And uh, all of them are, actually, except for one. And did you know this morning, they look at us, they think uh, all of this is just, they, they, think, they think that people, men, got together and cooked all this stuff up and wrote the Bible and told it to people to keep control over them or something, or get their money, some stupid, idiotic thing like that. And, uh, and they, they're, they're ignorant of the real body of Christ. Let me tell you something. You know who started the church? The church, I, uh, some guy put a, a video out, and I, I checked, popped up on my phone and looked at it, and he said, oh, these stupid Christians, they don't even realize the church did not begin until 300 A.D. Now, that guy, don't, he needs to be back there in that nursery this morning. Uh, the Catholic church started 300 A.D. The real church started right when the Lord started there in the Gospels. And there's, there's a lot of disagreement among, among preachers, but uh, the best I can understand it, when the, when the Lord called the disciples together there and breathed on them, and He said He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. That was the beginnings of the church here on this earth. And then the Holy Ghost came down on the day of Pentecost and literally circumcised spiritually them people and put them into a body. That's officially. And now look, now look this morning. Uh, uh, the reason that didn't happen while he's still here because he was in his body walking around in it. He wasn't going to have two of them. But his body, he's walking around in this one. So he went to heaven and then his, his, his body spiritually is here on this earth right now. 
of which me and you are the part. The night you got saved, God put you into the body of Christ. You didn't get uh, baptized by water into it. You got baptized by the Spirit into it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13 said, We are all baptized uh, by one Spirit into one body. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ. It's supernatural. It's not, you, you, can't, you can't come up here and say, I want to join this church and let's put your name on a, on a roll somewhere and that makes you go to heaven. That just puts you in this local physical body. Let me tell you something, brother. The Holy Ghost puts you in the real body of Christ. I'm glad that I got put in one night. I'm glad if there's a sinner in Nebo Baptist Church, the Holy Spirit put me into the body of Christ. In John chapter 20 and verse 22, he breathed on them. He was in his flesh. But in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost came down. And for the first time in the history of the world, spirit people were spiritually circumcised and placed into the organism called the church. Let me remind you, the church is not an organization. The church is an organism. An organism is something that's alive. Picture by that pearl. You know, the pearl is, is alive. That, that uh, pearl in the oyster, part of that oyster's body, it's alive. I'm glad to say this morning I, that's the, the creation of the church. But let me talk quickly about, secondly, the characteristics of the church. The characteristics of the church are uh, how it is pictured. Basically, I'll say this and move on quickly. Um, the characteristic of the church is we are here this morning to reflect Jesus Christ to a dark world. That's why the Bible compares the church to the moon. All the way through the Bible, Jesus, the Son of God, is compared to the sun. Sun's shining out there right now. The big bright light that rules the day. When the sun goes down, the moon comes out. Now the moon reflects light off of the sun to a dark world. Now a lot of folks try to argue with that and they'll say, well, the the moon has its own light. Now, the moon, the moon is a light. It's a lesser light, but it gets that light from the sun. And the sun shines on the moon, and the moon shines light on a dark world. That is exactly what me and you are doing here this morning. The world is dark. The sun of God's in heaven. We pray and read the Bible. He shines on us and gives light. To a dark world. That's why when somebody walks in here and I get up here and start doing this, somebody's there, they say, oh my goodness, I see. I see the light. I see the light. I see the light. That, that's the light of sun, S-O-N, reflecting to them. The church is supernatural. It's not just a bunch of people. There's somebody in here beside me and you. He said, we're two or three are gathered together. There am I in the midst of them. And I, I don't take kindly at all to this modern day philosophy of who really needs church. You can worship God just as good at home. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. That ain't what the book said. That ain't, he said, gather together. Gather together in person in my name. And there will I be in the midst of them. So the moon reflects the light of the sun to a dark world. You know what they got when the world gets in between the sun and the moon? Clips. Uh, it puts out that light, darkens that light of the moon. You know what happens when the world gets in between us and Jesus? Our light goes out. We don't shine the light. So that's a characteristic of it. Thirdly, I'm going to talk about the commission of the church. The commission of the church. What are we doing here? What is our job? What is Shining Light Baptist Church here in Morgan, North Carolina? What is our purpose? What is our mandate from our commander, the chief commander in heaven? It is threefold. You listen to me real careful. You wouldn't think people that say this here in this part of the country, but it's getting weird. It's getting weird. So let me hammer it down again. The purpose of a church is threefold. Number one, exalt the Savior. It is our job to exalt the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's everything. It's all about Him. Everything we do, every place we go, every activity we have, one way or another should always, and I mean always, exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, it is to evangelize the sinner. Exalt the Savior, evangelize the sinner. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. It is 
God's purpose and God's commission for this church and every church that's hearing me on, or by radio or internet or wherever you are to go into every nook, every cranny, down every road, down every street, down in every trailer park, in every apartment building, and every, every place you work, and every schoolhouse, and proclaim the gospel to a sinner, every single creature, every, listen, every youth activity, every youth event. I know people have church, churches have youth events that ain't even got nothing to do with God, Jesus, Bible, or nothing. That's a waste of time and God's money. Listen, every event we have, I mean, they can cut up and have fun, play games like we do at camp, but it ought to be a means to an end. It's a means to an end. It ain't just so we can have fun and spend a bunch of money. It is a means to an end. If you, you hang around me long enough, you'll notice that in, in the back of my head, no matter what we do, I'm headed one direction. One direction. And that's because years ago that I learned from great preachers that our job, our job is to get men to Jesus Christ and point them to Him and then teach them and train them and do the right thing. That's our job. By the grace of God, we ain't going to get sidetracked. It is not our job to clean up the community. I Sometimes I've seen these signs on the road. They'll say such and such road adopted by such and such Baptist church and the youth go out on Saturday and uh, it ain't, it ain't. God, I, God didn't commission us to go out on Saturday and pick up the beer can sinners throwed out last night. That's not our commission. Lord, surely we got a bigger purpose than that. I mean, God didn't call us to make the community a better place to live. God didn't call us to uh, to uh, improve relations between. I mean, nothing wrong with that stuff. That stuff's okay, but it's side issues. Those are side issues. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, God didn't call us. Uh, uh, to get a political candidate elected. God didn't call us. Now, all those are side issues. God didn't call us to go out in the White House and hold a sign up against abortion. There's nothing wrong with that. And we should be. But that's not our calling. Our calling is to evangelize sinners, edify saints, exalt the Savior, and get the job done that God's called us to do. There's a big movement out now called uh, putting out a thing called God after deconstruction. And what that's saying to people that uh, you, we're having to refigure this thing. The, the people nowadays are saying we're having to re, re-evaluate how we do church and figure this thing. And we got to figure this thing right and leave out the parts that are not palatable to our generation. In other words, we're going to have to fix God up and, and, and those scriptures about Judging, hell, and damnation, all that old mean stuff. That's got to go. No, no. That has no place anymore. That stuff's got to go if we're going to be palatable and relevant uh, to our generation. And what we're trying to do in our generation is make God cool so this generation will accept it. That is not our calling. Our calling is to preach the Bible as it is to men as they are and hope and pray and work and beg to they will accept it. But if they don't, they don't. They don't. Our job is to edify the sinner, uh, evangelize the, uh, the sinner, edify the saint, and exalt the Savior. Amen? Our job is not to have a big meeting like one church in, in, down the road here and, and try to uh, have an um, inclusive conference where everybody feels included. You, everybody should feel included. Nobody should feel hated or judged or looked down on or anything like that. But our calling is, let me tell you, best way in the world to solve Racial problem is all of us get our heart right with God. All of us. And I mean me, you, all of us. The best way to solve our our problems in our country is for all of us to get our hearts right with God and get down here and get our hearts right. That's the job of the church. We're not going to do it through legislation. I mean, I'm all for passing good law. I'm all for it, 100%. But our job is to get people's heart right with God and get this done. Amen? Now let me talk about, fourthly, the conflicts of the church. The Lord never said it'd be easy. When he left here, he said, now look, y'all guys are going to get it. As soon as I'm gone, you're going to get it. And sure enough, he hadn't been gone a week. They was persecuting them. They was running them out of town. Even in the book of Acts, the Bible said there arose great persecution against the church. It started as soon as Paul, uh, uh, right, Paul got saved. They wound up cutting his head off. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 1, it said there was great persecution. In Acts chapter 12 and verse 2, it said Herod the king killed James and he was trying to get Peter. 
And ever since then, Christians have been killed by the tens of thousands, people. Our forefathers who bled and died so that, so that we could have this book and have this privilege that I have here this morning, they fought a bloody, bloody, bloody battle. They cuss it all the time. The church has been made fun of. The church has been mocked. The church has been laughed at down through the centuries, down through the dark ages. People like John Wycliffe, who was burned at the stake. Men like John Huss, who was burned at the stake for believing the same thing you and I believe here this morning. Oh, Brother Danny, you're just a dying breed and your kind's dying out. Well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. They said that 200 years ago and God popped up some more. They said that 500 years ago and God popped. You know something about Christians? In persecution, the church does better. I mean, they kill one, two pops up in its place. There's just something about it. The conflicts of the church has made the church stronger and greater. little persecution, nobody likes it, but it makes it better. Amen? I'm telling you this, this one. I read about old uh, Father Hooper, and you should learn church history. And one thing wrong with Americans is we don't know our roots. Uh, we don't know where we come from. Like he's talking about in Sunday school, and we don't know what we stand for. We don't even know what we are. I heard some nut. Uh, there's interviewing this girl. She talked to him, and she was talking about. Uh, she she said, "I don't even believe in patriotism. I don't even believe in borders. I don't even believe in." I thought that that poor nut don't know where she's washing or hanging out, like Charles Worley said. And uh, uh, he, she said, uh, uh, our, "We don't know our roots, and our roots are people who were burned at the stake." Father Hooper was a very aged man, and this old man they tried to get him to deny the Lord, and he wouldn't. Tried to get him to deny the Lord, and he wouldn't. Old white-haired man. They said, we're going to burn you. You don't take the mass. You don't bow down to Mary. You don't, we'll burn you. This is all documented church history. There's millions of them. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. You know, uh, you, you can find it anymore. And Father Hooper said, I'll not deny the Lord. They took that old man up there. And one of his friends said, Father Hooper, they didn't call him Father because he was a priest. They called him Father out of respect because everybody in the community knew him. And they put him up there and they said, Poppy, they said, now, if a man can stand the flames, will you raise your hand? He said, I'll do it. They took him up there and he asked the boy that was going to chain him. He said, can you leave my hands loose? And the boy thought, this poor man ain't going nowhere. He wrapped the chains around his leg, chains around his body. They put that old man up there and they lit that fire. And that fire started coming up there and hitting up the side of his legs. Big red welt up the side of his legs. And it went out. And it got it started again because the, the kindling was green. And it went out and it got it going again. And finally, the stress just started popping. You hear it frying water and uh, blood started oozing out of his arms and legs. Finally, that fire caught up there and got it in old man's beard. And he went up and flamed like cat. And there's all sudden there saying, I can't watch this. I can't watch this. About that time, they said that old man's hand went up like that and clapped three times hung his head over like that and went home to be with the Lord. That's, brother, That's our, you're going to live with that guy one of these days. You're, you might live right beside him in heaven. And you'll say, well, they laughed at me and I quit. No, you better not try that. I'm telling you, brother, our church, the church has been in conflict over the years. I mean, they, they took little old girls up there, 17, 18 years old, and, and they said, uh, Come, take the mass, we'll kill you. And uh, they said, go to mass, we'll kill you. She said, I'm afraid I might meet the devil if I go there. And well, they burned them little old girls, 17, 18 years old. The church has been in conflict through the dark ages, through all those times. You say, well, Brother Danny, that was a long time ago. Uh-uh, uh-uh. That's going on now. Just because we don't see it here. It's going on now in North Korea, in Somalia, in Yemen, in Libya, in Nigeria, in Pakistan. Right now, today, they requested prayer for a 16-year-old boy this week who's in jail for blasphemy. And this young man uh, is in Pakistan in prison right now. And, the, and the, what's that guy, uh, Seculo, Jay Seculo and all them, uh, the Christian law people are trying to rescue this young man right now in our generation. Ladies and gentlemen, there's only 300 million Christians in 2024 suffering persecution or discrimination because of their belief in Jesus Christ. 
We are not outside of conflict. Onward, Christian soldiers. Like he was talking about a while ago. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a sad time. When our, our government, they're, they're, the government, uh, federal government, is reducing documents right now that are urging, you heard about this? Everybody's talking about this week. Urging banks to make flag words so that when you do certain business at your bank, it'll throw up a flag so they can track you down and label you as some kind of troublemaker or rebel. Or and one of those words is Bible. You buy a Bible? They're wanting it flagged. That's a, that's a scary mark on you. You might be a crazy person that tries to kill people. Bible. Bass Pro Shop. Stuff like that. If you buy, they're trying the banks to recognize certain words, and of course you know what others are, obviously. I mean, that will label you as a terrorist. Ladies and gentlemen, there's only one explanation after thousands of years after persecution, kill them by the tens of thousands, after governments trying to smash them out, passing laws, tracking them down, kill them. There's only one explanation for us still being here today, and that is the words of Jesus on this rock, I will build my church. That's the only explanation you can find. He's building it. I'm glad I'm a part of it. Thank God. Amen? Our hope's not in this world. Our hope is in Him. I will say finally in closing this morning, I'm going to talk about the crown of the church. He ain't done. One of these days, the trumpet's going to sound. The Bible said, from whence we look for the Savior. We're looking for the Lord to come. The Bible said, looking for that blessed hope. We are looking for the Lord to come back. What he started, he will also finish. We don't know how long that'll be or what we might see in between now and then. But I tell you one thing, brother. One of these days that trumpet's going to sound and the Bible said the voice of the archangel and the trump. Trump is a sound a trumpet makes. What is it? That, that'd be the trump. Uh, the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now think about this. Now think about that. Uh, the Lord, when he said we're going to get the children of Israel out of Egypt, he sent Moses, go down there and get them out. When, uh, when the Lord, he wanted uh, the gospel preacher, he sent the disciples, go over here and do this. When he wants Joshua, he sent Joshua to do that. But when he comes to finish this thing, he's not saying, Joshua, will you go down there and get them for me? The Lord ain't going to say, Moses, come here, I got something for you to do. Will you go down, down there in the earth and get my kids out of there and get the bride of Christ, bring up here for my son to get married? The Lord, no, the Bible said the Lord, he's coming himself. He ain't sending nobody. He ain't sending a prophet. He ain't sending an angel. He's not sending some ambassador for heaven. Lord of God, brother, when it comes time for us to go, himself, the Lord himself's coming back again. Woo, that's shouting ground, people. Amen. The crown of the church. The, 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 he's coming himself. Amen. Up from the quiet valleys. Up from the hillside. The sun, sunshine on the hillside. Up from them distant battlefields. Where Christians have given their lives for the Lord. Up from the jungles of India. Up from the swamps of Africa. Up from the... Uh, there will be a radiant host come up out of that ground and the graves will be open, brother, up from the hospital where the saints of God and over there from them rest homes all over the world where they're sitting there saying their body's hurting and they're saying, Jesus, I'm waiting on you. Brother, that glad day's coming. Thank God when the Lord's going to come. I'm telling you today, what he started, he's going to finish one of these days. Hallelujah. You say, what's going to happen, preacher? We're going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to get the wrinkles ironed out of our wedding garment first. I, you dread that part now. But I say that's all over but shout. We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to get some things fixed. And then we'll put on our wedding garment. And he's going to have a supper. And the guests that during that tribulation, you remember that scripture where he said, Man made a great supper. He said, "Go out in the highways and heads and compel them in." And the wedding was furnished with guests. That's who's going to be the guest at that wedding. That ain't the bride. The bride's already with him, and he comes back in Revelation nineteen eleven, 
And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And the armies which were in heaven followed him. But they were coming back, like the old preacher said, we're going to leave like Superman and come back like a long ranger. Amen. <laughs> That's right, brother. We're going to come on them horses, and we're coming to follow the Lord, and we're going home to be with him. And what, that we're right now in the church militant, then we'll be in the church triumphant again. Right now, we're in the church militant. That day, it'll be the church triumphant. We'll never find another battle. We'll never get sick again. We'll never have no sickness. We'll never have no divorce courts. We'll never have no death. Ain't going to be no liquor there, brother. Ain't going to be no beer. There won't be no rap music, rock music, beer, joint, pop, head. Uh, all, there ain't going to be no drugs. Ain't going to be no crime. Nobody's going to get hurt. It'll just be glory and peace and pri- power and glory. Glory forever and ever and ever and ever. That's that's the crown of the church. Listen, when Jesus Christ said he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Take it to the bank, brother. It's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. I don't know how it's all going to go. But I know one thing. He'll finish what he started. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you, right here this morning, you, teenager, adult, mom, dad, a part of that church? You don't pay money to get in it. You don't sign a card to get in it. You must be born again. And the Bible said, Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. He was buried. He rose again according to the Scripture. And if you'll believe that this morning, say, i tell you what, I feel like, Brother Danny, this old world ain't got much of a future, but I sure would like to go with y'all when you leave here. You can be a part of God's church. you finish it. I stand by our heads and pray. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are our clothes this morning. Keanu, why don't you come up here right quick and play something real soft. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. Nobody's talking. Miss Desi, come on right quick. Sorry. Nobody's talking. Nobody's, nobody's moving. I want you to search your heart right now. Search your heart right now. You say, Brother Danny, Years and years ago, I know I got saved. I know I got saved, and I'm a part of His church, but somehow or another, I've sort of got my eyes off the Lord. For some reason or another, I'm not, it's not real to me like it used to be. And I've let the devil, I've let the devil just mess me up. Or I, I don't know, but Danny, I feel like I'm losing my faith. That's what'll happen to you. The world make an infidel out of you. Do it. You let the Lord help you this morning. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Lord, that you touch that one, that boy, that girl, that mom or dad this morning who needs to come to this altar. Maybe there's somebody here this morning who's never been saved. I don't know. I pray that you speak to their heart if they are. I pray that this will be the day when they'll come put their faith and trust completely in you. Help them, Lord Jesus. Help them, Lord. Help them to make that step. God, do what ought to be done. Lord Jesus, move upon us, Father, we ask. Lord, I pray that you bless us. Lord, I pray that you'd speak the heart. I pray for that Christian who may be struggling and the devil's got them all off track. They're on in the ditch. Lord, if this will be the day they'll come, do what ought to be done right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While we're praying this morning, Maybe there's somebody here this morning. Join these on the altar. Something's already coming. You just slip out of your seat. You just get down here and just say, Lord. I remember a long time ago when I got saved. And I've not been doing right. Right now. Right now. I'm starting all over again. Right now. Come on, right now. Just get down right here. Maybe you're here this morning. And you say, I, I ain't never been saved. I've never been saved. You can get saved today and you should. You can get saved today and you should. I'm not talking about a little religious experience or you joined church when you was a little kid. I'm talking about 
Trust in Jesus in your heart. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. His death, His burial, His resurrection. The Bible said, Thou shalt be saved. You come right now. Come while these are praying. Amen. 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 He'll finish it. You don't have to worry about all oh, the church going out of style, preacher. They've said that for a thousand years. Still here. All them old preachers died out and there's a whole new crop up coming up right now. Young preachers everywhere preaching, preaching hell, fire, and damnation, brother. Ain't that something? The Lord never will let this thing go down. Right. We may get knocked hard, but we ain't going down by His grace. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen, boys. Pray, pray, pray. I keep praying. I keep praying. You got a good afternoon. It's cold outside. You got a good afternoon. Just go home and get your Bible. Leave the TV off. Get your Bible. And just snuggle up there and read and pray and read and pray and read and pray. Let God work in your heart and in your life. Let Him. Let Him. He'll bless you. He'll do that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Amen. Are these still praying now? Uh, don't miss the service tonight. Last Sunday night. Last Sunday night looked like Sunday morning in here. It's un unbelievable. You'll believe what a crowd had. That youth night, real good. And so, be back tonight, 6 o'clock. Ain't going to rain no more. For several days. So, if I be here, God bless you for it. Men's are right here. We get signed up for the Sweetheart Banquet. All, everybody that's coming to the Sweetheart Banquet, we need you to get signed up here. And you don't have to pay today. You can if you want to. But you don't have to. Uh, so just get your name on here so they'll know how much food you get. So please just run up here and sign that right quick before you leave. Okay? All right. Amen. All right. All hearts clear? All right. Sweethearts, uh, get signed up right here. That'll be February the 10th. It's $25 per couple. Ladies bring a dessert. And it's going to be uh, uh, Olive Garden food. Sip a lot better. Miss Karen's doing it. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Everybody can. I've had other ladies say, is, is, is we gonna have all we're gonna have Italian food. Hey, you know, I ain't my favorite, but uh, I'd come, I'd come if we was having dog food. Just because it's fun. Amen. Well, it's, it's fun. I'd slip me a bologna sandwich in there and just eat it while and that way I'd have fun. It's it's fun, I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun. It'll strengthen your marriage. And uh, so so come on up here and, and get signed up. Amen. <laughs> all right. All right, let's pray and we'll be dismissed. But Joey, sure good to see him feeling better. Ain't that a blessing? You dismiss us and everybody fellowship for you guys.